So I was lying in bed one morning in the spring of 2021, and I saw this video by Teaching Tech about a 3D printed turntable, which was quite a cool video, but wasn't what I was expecting based off of the brief glance I gave the little thumbnail icon. I thought it was about a 3D printer with a circular spinning bed. And so that gave me this whole idea for like, you know, a 3D printer with a circular spinning bed. And such a printer, like with a normal bed slinger, the bed has to go back and forth and back and forth and stop and start and stop and start. And with a spinning bed, it could just spin around and around and around continuously. And you could even maybe get it printing, like have that bed really, you know, spinning pretty quickly. Uh, and so I got this image of just like being able to just like print out a vase on such a printer, something a little bit like this. And so I set off to make that image a reality. Such a printer would have a coordinate system consisting of an angle value, a radius value, and a Z value. That's cylindrical coordinates. So I searched the web for cylindrical coordinate 3D printers, and I didn't find anything, or at least at the time I thought I didn't. Now I later learned that these kinds of 3D printers exist. They're called polar printers or polar kinematics, which doesn't fully make sense to me since polar in 3D is two angles and a radius. But I guess it's because 3D printers are made up of 2D layers, and in 2D the coordinates are just an angle and a radius, which is polar. Still, I tend to interchange polar and cylindrical. So then we fast forward to the fall of 2022, when I am in the first semester of this whole big three semester long capstone project. And in that first semester, we were kind of coming up with ideas and pitching them to the class. And I decided to pitch this whole polar printer idea to the class. And I could have done a better job pitching it, but the response I got was that uh, no one's really interested in that. So I was like, okay, I'll just make it myself at some unspecified point in the future. And then I happened to be on the Creality website in uh, over Thanksgiving, and they were having a great big Black Friday sale. And so I wound up <laughs> kind of impulsively buying this Ender 2 Pro for this project. Because in thinking about this project, I'd, it seemed like the easiest, best way to do it would be to convert an existing printer to be polar instead of making one from scratch. And cantilever printers seem perfect for this since that X arm is already sort of, you know, so set up to be a radius. Uh, and so suddenly this project went from being this kind of theoretical I'll do at some point in the future to, hey, I've bought parts and this is now an active thing that I'm working on. So I spent the spring of 2023 catting it all out and making the whole design. And then over that summer, I assembled it, which kind of broke my heart because I had to destroy this beautiful Ender 2 Pro. And it, even though I just had it for a couple months, it was, I, I really fell in love with that printer. It was just like, this is such a cool little printer with this cool little bed. And, uh, you know, then of course it's kind of terrifying to be disassembling this fully functional, fully working printer. Uh, and you're like, oh, is this gonna, I, I might've just destroyed this and it's never gonna print again, you know? <laughs> um, but I, uh, yeah, got it all assembled and got it all put together and it rather went rather smoothly. Now, as I mentioned before, these kinds of printers, polar printers already exist. And that wound up being a really great thing because it meant that the whole polar config and all that code for Clipper had already been made. And so that made it a lot easier to get it up and running on my printer. Uh, in fact, the biggest issues I ran into were just the result of my own stupidity because I would do something dumb, like assign the stepper to the wrong pins. And then when it didn't work, I immediately assumed that, oh, because Polar is so experimental, it's gotta be some issue deep down in the code. And so I'd start rifling through all the low level code files only to eventually discover that it was be, you know, something as simple as a pin being wrong. Uh, and now one thing I was concerned about was the power supply because I, was using a now larger circular bed, but it was still just running off of the same original Ender 2 power supply, which was just meant for this tiny little Ender 2 bed. And it just so happened that while I'm working on this whole project, the, the twin to this project was this whole other project adding dual hot ends to my Ender 3. And in doing that project, I, uh, you know, I kind of come to this conclusion that I, the Ender 3 power supply wasn't quite big enough to be running two hot ends at the same time. And so for that project, I wound up getting a power supply, to, you know, bigger power supply to handle everything. And then that meant I could, you know, take that old Ender 3 power supply and apply it to this. And so it all kind of worked out pretty, pretty nicely. Uh, and then, yeah, it's pretty quickly. It was all, you know, the version one, that the rough draft, if you will, was all done.
It's intense transformation warranted a name change to Cylinder 2. Get it? And, uh, it's painting first, so far, successful Benchy. So problem one, the hardware was now done, which meant we were on to problem two, the software. Now, the existing software works, but it's not perfect, especially around the center, that origin point, it starts to break down and it doesn't really work. You can see here uh, in the middle of this print, in trying to move to the center, it just stops and freaks out and you know you get this whole clipper shutdown that occurs. Part of the problem is that Cura is configured to use Cartesian coordinates. And so even though I have it set up with a circular bed, it's still just using X, Y, and Z. Uh, and so that means that it sees a basic move like, say, from 1, 0 to minus 1, 0 as just that, a little basic little move, you know, whatever, just move across. But in reality, that move requires three different parts because you have to move to the origin, 0, 0, then rotate the entire bed 180 degrees, and then move back because the radius arm is at its max when it's at the origin. So you can't go any further to just, like, print that line in one move. And so the printer tries to do the single move that Cura generates, and there's this massive spike in acceleration as the printer tries to swing the bed around 180 degrees instantly. And anywhere near that center point, small changes in Cartesian coordinates result in massive changes in the angular polar coordinate, which results in massive acceleration, which leads to layer shifts and belt grinding. and your veggie starts to look like this. The center point is what for some reason I tended to call an inflection point, and what my robotics textbook calls a singularity point, which is a pretty great name, because it means I get to say things like this. I am working on the problem of the singularity. And hopefully later on I'll get to say something like this. I solved the problem of the singularity. Take that, Einstein. When I first got this printer up and running, I tried doing just a basic clipper terminal g-code command to move the hot end to the center, and it wouldn't even do that without freaking out and shutting down and saying it had gone out of bounds. At the time, I thought it was part of this whole singularity problem, but now I'm thinking it's more just a generic clipper issue. In any case, when I turned the project back on recently, it has stopped doing it. Look at that. See kids, proof that hoping your problems fix themselves works. With the hot end now able to move to the origin, I thought I'd try printing a vase. And it worked! It's the image from my head made real! Not only that, but look at how beautiful this print is! So, I'm done, right? I mean, sure, if I'm okay with the printer making these noises... And even then, not printing at the center. Spoiler, I'm not. So it's time to really tackle this singularity problem. And I've seen other printers, other polar printers out there that can print through the origin. So somewhere out there, software exists that can do this. And I made a bit of an effort to find it, but you know, I wound up just kind of making it myself. Really the best solution is to modify Cura and or Clipper to work better with polar printers. But I am nowhere near skilled enough to be modifying software that large. So I went with an easier option and made this post slicer Python code all by myself. I don't care what my internet history says. It runs through the Cura code and modifies it to go slower depending on how close that line of movement comes to the singularity. It was super satisfying to code and actually kind of a fun problem to solve. In testing the software, I used just basic single layer designs. And so one thing the code does is it creates all these plots. And so you can see what the movements look like before all the modifications, and then when that looks like after all the modifications. This plot sets the color of each line depending on how fast that line is. So you can see it gets slower and slower the closer the line is to the origin. You can see too that the Python code also splits G-code movements that are really close to the center into three distinct movements, where the middle part that's really close to the center is slowed down even further to like a snail's pace. But that's needed to, even at that snail's pace, the bed is still accelerating quite quickly to like, you know, whip around to the other side. I also have this third plot which shows every movement is a different color. And so you can see that the Python code also splits movements that are going directly through the center to be broken into a line to the center, then a series of movements to rotate the bed 180 degrees, and then a line away. And after a lot of tests, it's working! Just printed out a truly ugly under extruded bad bed adhesion print, and I'm not mad because it looks like the lines are pretty straight, and that's what I needed. So after throwing on some improved parts and making a proper little case for the Pi, I'll need those extra USB ports for another project. 
It's all done. This is the finished base. It's it's funny from some angles. It looks like it's got a uh, hole in the bottom in the, in the middle. It doesn't. It just has a really thin layer right there because I had the bed a little bit too close. Uh, so I was like lowering the bed as it was starting to print as I noticed it was too close. Uh, interesting point. The reason I think that the original had a hole in the middle and the reason I was getting a hole on some of the test prints uh, was because the bed wasn't uh, centered so it was a mechanical problem not like a code problem and so once I centered it, it it went away now this face just like my first face I set it to have like 999 walls as the bottom layer so instead of any back and forth movement it's just a bunch of concentric circles because uh, I really wanted to have just everything be spinning everything be circles to show that it can do back and forth movements through the origin, I printed out another test square. result it had a bit of bed adhesion issues on the corner but it did print through the center it's kind of odd that i've never seen this before it's gotten all rough but uh <laughs> with the bed adhesion and the roughness i decided to print it a second time and uh then i started getting some under extrusion so uh, <laughs> still some tweaks to do but i feel like these are just normal uh you know problems instead of being like problems surrounding the singularity this printer is still quite experimental, but it's working. And I was able to turn that image in my head of being able to just continuously spin out a vase into a reality. So I'm quite happy with that. Uh, now, my post slicer Python code really isn't the best solution. Really, there needs to be changes to Cure and Clipper to make them better suited to work with polar printers. And unfortunately, that's just beyond me. So part of the reason for this whole video is uh, to do my own tiny little part to push polar printers a little bit further into the light in the hopes that maybe someone will be inspired to take polar printers even further. Uh, there are so many shapes and patterns that are so much easier to make with polar than in Cartesian coordinates. And so I could just see some, it being really easy to print out like infill patterns that are like spiderweb infill patterns or rose petal or spiral or golden ratio. And I, I could see that being really easy to do on a polar printer. Uh, so I'm quite excited to see what happens with polar in the future. Uh, now all the files for this project are linked in the uh, description down below. So you can check those out. And uh, that's about it. So thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.